Welcome back everybody to Beyond the Summit, where we are going to be bringing you game number two of our grand finals here for the ACG SEA Best of the Best. It's the grand finals, it's RRQ Rex Regum Kion up against Scythe Singapore. And Scythe, they took game one, fairly close 42 minute epic game, and now it's game two. Scythe looking to seal the deal 2-0. RRQ looking to bounce things back, force it to a game three. We had a game three in our first series of the day where Titan took out Execration 2-1 in the third place decided, but this... This is our grand finals on Scythe. They won't want to take, take this to a game three. They'll be wanting to close out the series 2-0 here, but RRQ, well, they've been proven to be pretty tough opposition as of late. So, guys, we'll get ourselves into the game, into the draft. There's uh, has been a fun day of games, action. Do apologize for uh, all the uh, mayhem in the chat, <laughs> most of which is my own doing. But uh, unfortunately, the Twitch plugin for the giveaways we're going to do is not working anymore. The developer left a post saying, oh, it's not actually working, it needs a few days to fix it, but we'll do all those giveaways over um, Facebook slash Twitter, probably mostly through the Twitter Photoshop stuff. Like, for those of you, who, what we did, um, for those of you who don't know, we're, we're going to have um, Photoshops of myself and LD, just done whatever funny, ridiculous stuff you can do, and we'll choose the best ones, and uh, we'll tweet at you, get your contact info, and send you a, a luckless box. So, uh you can keep doing those, we'll keep, keep on taking submissions, so just keep sending tweet at Beyond the Summit, at BTS Gods, at LD Dota. Tweet at us and let us um, know your funny like screen caps of myself and LD. So you can just be get a screenshot from one of our VODs of me and LD at the desk. It could be from in the studio, I'll show from the main studio. Um, and tweet at Beyond the Summit with your Photoshop. So Photoshop whatever funny faces you can find on there. And that'll be, that's what we're doing it's here. Remaining. But for now, it's game two. We'll talk about Dota, because that's what we're here to watch. At least, well, hopefully most of you. Um, it's Scythe playing on the Radiant side. They managed to get themselves a first pick Invoker to start Reserve things off here. Time. Once again, no Naga, no Lycan, Miracle. The Rat Dota is not allowed today, but he's happy to pick and play other heroes. We saw him in a Brewmaster in game number one. Which, had, which was played to great effect, and here we are in game number two. Possibly his Invoker. Miracle does often play Invoker. I'll have to see if he's going to be handling it, or if we look towards someone like Pelosin playing it in the in the mid lane, perhaps, instead. But RRQ can AA Shadow Shaman as their support duo. Shadow Shaman, obviously, like quite a bit scarier on the Dire side, being able to take the Roshans fairly easy, easily. And we'll see exactly what they have in mind with the, the rest of their core heroes because so far just the supports have been picked up scythe invoker sand king so they get the uh sort of semi greedy support here in sand king it's not actually that greedy like you can actually lane him if you need to it's only if you're in a safe lane trailing against an off you say okay i'm not needed here i'll go stack i'll go farm my jungle and a good hero to have against aa shadow shaman because these are two fairly squishy supports supports who aren't getting bkbs not that many supports find bkb anyways but supports you can get Caught out, initiated on by a blink Five barrow strike, an empty center remaining. blink into a barrow strike, whatever it may be. So, um, we'll see uh, what's Dyer actually going to be going on here with the rest of the draft. The sniper ban starts coming out. Scythe, no. That koala sniper man, you, you can't let him get his hands on it. Especially when you've got these ranged heroes, you've got chilling touch on your side. Not something you, you are... You want to get involved Ten with, so uh, we'll see exactly what they're going to get as their carry hero instead. Last Radiant one was the Luna Shadow back. Fiend, and those heroes still an option for RQ. They ban out the Nature's Prophet, so you want to start taking out some offlaner options. They know that Scythe need most likely an offlaner, some kind of a carry, and uh, another support, probably something ranged to go with that Sand King. Um, maybe Ten the jungler's coming to play. Chen and Enchantress both still in the pool, both still Five viable options here remaining. for game number two, and. Uh, We'll see what exactly they have in mind. <laughs> oh. Dire team ban. X. Oh. They're really banning out RRQ's trademark. Well, not so much trademark heroes, but heroes they've been using recently that, that are kind of unusual, unorthodox heroes. Um, those of you tuning in, like, what the hell are these bans? Koala plays a lot of sniper, and they've been doing trialing X seconds. quite a lot Ten as well. So remaining. these are actual heroes that RRQ would like to use. Five seconds remaining. Okay. We'll, we'll see exactly what they get instead. I mean, last game they didn't go for either of these heroes. The Axe and Sniper were both Dyer in the pool. They didn't need pick. them. Oh, I like this Dazzle Band. That'd be a good range support to go along with the Scythe lineup. And, well, RRQ, their first pick out of the uh, banning stage in the second second stage here. We'll have to see what kind of core heroes they want to grab for themselves. 
I think they'll go into that trap of getting those hard late game carries. They had two hard carries for the late game last game, and that was really kind of their downfall. They needed just maybe Ten either seconds, Luna or Shadowfiend, and then get some kind of more utility based hero, something with a bit more team fight, or at least something that remaining. is a bit tankier, like your slider type heroes on the front lines. They get Nyx Assassin for now. I like this pickup. It is kind of almost guaranteed to offline. It doesn't do great mid anymore against heroes like Invoke. He just kind of gets outlast hit too, too much, but. We'll see. You never know, never know for sure, but Nyx Assassin likely be in the offlane, so something that Scythe can kind of anticipate to come out. And, uh, well, we'll see exactly what Scythe want to get with these next couple of picks. Scythe, uh, once again, um, Ten have first remaining. pick. Important to know. Um, yeah, Scythe, Scythe the first pick two remaining. games in a row. I'm not sure. Maybe, I, I imagine they kind of can check this out. I may, may have been something they said Reserve in the lobby, time. but I don't want to pop up the lobby all of a sudden. You guys want to see the draft, but um, it may be related to that, because Scythe having first pick two games in a row, definitely saying that suits him, because it means you're forced to ban out Lycan. RIQ had to ban Lycan and Naga both games. Like, you're versing Scythe, you want to ban this Naga. Your opponents have first pick, you want to ban the Lycan. So, I feel RIQ giving Scythe first pick two games in a row is a bit of a mistake here, and I assume that was done by choice. Like, they chose to be on the dire side, um in these games so um bit a bit unusual uh coming out coming out from these teams but rq maybe just deciding that they prefer being on the die side this time around and deciding to to pick that scythe maybe chose radiant what more i'm trying to think dire team scythe maybe chose first pick in the first game but they had first pick and dire last game i guess rq really wanted the dire side and were willing to give up first pick for it Whereas in game one, Scythe maybe chose first pick, and then... Well, no, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. If RQ preferred Dire, like, there's no way... They had Radiant and second pick in game one. So, it seems like either of those isn't favorable for them, but... Hey. Well, actually, Ten Radiant's just fine. Like, remaining. I don't think RQ would prefer Dire side. Okay, what probably happened is RQ chose... RQ probably chose first pick in game one, and then Scythe said, okay, we'll take... What? Reserved no, RQ chose Radiant, sorry, in game one. I don't... Fuck, man. I'm, I'm confusing myself. Either way, it doesn't make sense. Radiant team no pick. sense was made today. As uh, RQ going to pick up a Puck here in game number two. That's going to be their solo mid hero. Uh, pretty stable, stable hero all around. We've got a uh, good team fight presence as well. Lots of lockdown, lots of nuke damage here. This is a great game for Scythe to rack up some BKBs. You've got AA... Shaman, Nyx Assassin disables, Puck disables. This is definitely a BKB game. So whatever Scythe pick up for their carry, probably Ten gonna be some BKB remaining. purchaser. And Five just as to what that might remaining. be, we'll have to wait and see. Miracle not known for his BKB carry heroes. Like he'll play heroes like the Nagasara and the Rat Dota's more Reserve more style time. of play, but do they even go Brewmaster again? Like having a Brewmaster to kind of control the tempo of it could be decent, but they go Clockwork for now, so ban. that's most likely Hannah's hero for the offlane. And uh, we'll see him up against probably a pretty annoying, scary trial of the AA Shadow Shaman plus one. Both teams lacking a carry hero, seemingly. And it's going to be RRQ picking up first. So Scythe can somewhat respond to what they see RRQ Five pick up with their carry remaining. hero. And RRQ probably want... Uh, maybe look towards a Spectre ban from Scythe, because a, a Spectre time. is a nice kind of tanky hero, which you can combine with the AA Shadow Shaman. Sure, you maybe want a ranged hero with the Chilling Touch, but it's just... It's an offlane clockwork. It's not like you're going... Well, you could go trial versus trial. Maybe that's what they say they want to do. You got AA Shadow Shaman with, a, like, a Weaver or something. Some kind of a range right-clicker to combine with the Chilling Touch. Maybe you do pretty well. I don't think Luna is something that Scythe is that particularly scared of. Um, more worried, yeah. Spectre is potentially problematic. Morphling is there as well. and Well, Morphling is more something that Scythe want to be picking up themselves. Uh, obviously, that Miracle Morphling is a thing. So... We'll see. In just a second here. Both teams with one more ban each. And they'll be most likely looking at ban at some of those carries. Invoker is always a potential safe link farmer as well. As some teams like to run him. IG especially have done that with uh, Luo playing the safe link farming role on Invoker. So. 25 seconds. RQ using up most of their bonus time just on the ban here. Deciding that's going to be more important than what they want to last pick. They can also use this time to think through. This is what we ban and then what we're going to pick. So they ban Anti-Mage. That's Radiant a miracle hero. That's a split pusher. Ban. I'd be more worried about the morphling than the anti mage, perhaps. I guess, yeah. I guess you've got more actual ways to deal with an with an uh, morphling with the mana burn, which hurts him a lot of lockdown. Anti mage 
He's kind of split pushing all over the place, be, uh, blinking around, Ten can go for a BKB and just avoiding the fights. Morphling is more like a come to the fights kind of carry here, and that's where Five you've got Puck with remaining. Silence. Mana burn, carapace, plenty of stuns on lockdown, and Morphling really struggles. Antimage is a never come to fights kind of kind of carry here, and Slark can be the last man from Scythe. So another hero Araku have played a bit of as of late. So we'll see just what's going to be coming out here. As uh, still lots of carry, the carry pool is just so wide and varied. Like you've got your kind of fringe picks, your Rickies, your faceless voids, but Araku goes state safe and standard. They pick up the Spectre. And that's going to be a nice kind of tanky frontliner as well, if he goes, especially if he goes for that Vanguard build. Scythe, now, what do they have in mind? Morphling, great, against Spectre. You get a free replicate of that Spectre with a Heart plus Radiance. You're looking sweet. Sure, there is a Shadow Shaman to Hex and destroy the replicate, um, but I, you kill the Shadow Shaman, then use Replicate on the Spectre, if that's what you got to do. You've got a Clockwork, remaining. you can find out the Shadow Shaman, and Clockwork are great here to have against these kind of supports. Shadow Five Shaman AA, remaining. fairly squishy and vulnerable, so I'm interested to see what Scythe have in mind here. 25 Reserve seconds time. Uh, at their disposal to decide just what they want to pick here. Game 2, they do lead this best of three Grand Finals, one game to nothing, and, well... It'll be interesting to see just what they have in mind. Ten seconds to go. Ten seconds and remaining. The heat is on for this team. Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin. So it is going to be likely a safe lane Dire farming invoker. They go TA as they mid here over to verse the puck. And they want to get that more favorable 1v1 mid matchup. Miracle actually going to handle the TA. So it puts Pelosi on the invoker. But I still think we see Miracle in the mid lane. Last game around he played a safe lane farming brewmaster. Didn't do too well. He's not had fun in these 1v1 matchups. He got crushed by NFR on that offlane Batrider in the 1v1 matchup, but... Hey. Let's go. Let's let's see how things work out. Invoker probably looks towards an Exalt build this game, I feel. Just can be a bit more aggressive. Can combine with the chain stuns of a Sanking and Rubik pretty well. Can just dish out a lot more damage as well that you want to use to kill a Spectre. Like, sure, you can Tornado EMP a Spectre, but that just kind of... He shrugged it off a bit. He's not, I mean, he's mana dependent in some senses, but if he's already Ten haunted into the fight remaining. with a Spectral dam Dagger, the damage is done, like, the <laughs> EMP is not going to matter too much. Got a lot of heroes who can just get in and out of these fights pretty well at the same time as well, so. Here we go, Anna. is going to be picking up the clockwork. We'll introduce our two teams. Prepare is our grand battle. finals here of the ACG SEA Best of the Best, brought to you by E-Club, sponsored by NVIDIA. And it's going to be Hannah on the Scythe Singapore side playing the offlane Clockwork. We've got Zero Zero or X Freedom playing to support Rubik. Pelosin on a safe lane farming Invoker. Miracle playing a solo mid Templar Assassin. That leaves Sanking in the hands of Chibix, the kind of four position support player over on the Scythe side. And on the Dire side, it is going to be Team Rex Regum Kion, RRQ. They're going to be putting Nyx Assassin in the hands of NFR. He's your offlaner with Boots first. Don Juan on the solo mid Puck. YPRM. The stand-in, although apparently he's kind of a more permanent addition to this team, playing the Ancient Apparition. Jehenna playing the Shadow Shaman. Then finally, it's going to be Koala with a Quelling Blade for Spectre. And they go for a roam through the jungle here. Rubik yeah, does scout them out, not going to be in range for an Impale, so he's playing this as safely as possible while getting maximum intel. Battle. It's all about getting information about what your opponents are doing, and he does just that. Chibik's actually almost in range for a stun there, but they've got a 3v5 scenario, not to mention... Apparently Invoker's not very good at level 1 fights. Yeah, not too good at all. What are you going to get? You get the Exot, Quas, Wex, doesn't matter. You've got no spells at level 1. Not until you hit that level 2 do you actually uh, <laughs> do you actually get anything out of this. So uh, we'll see. Invoker in the safe lane farming role. The it's like Miracle begins. TA up against the Puck. A must-win match for RIQ. Second place still gets, I think, 1,000 US dollars, 2,000 for first. Don't quote me on that. I could be, I could be slightly wrong. Oh, they're using up Tango's here. They're looking for the Observe Ward. It's over here. This... Does this block the pool? We'll find out. I know, like, if you put it, like, in this spot here, it blocks the pool. But down here may just be for vision um, and to scout things out. But it may also block the pool. We'll find out soon enough. Yeah, it's, it doesn't block the pool. Okay. Just a vision ward. Hoping to not get dewatered. And he won't get dewatered, but he's... Also, his, his opponents in this lane do have a pool available to them. So that means that for Sanking especially, that's great. That's what he wants. Use that pull to his advantage. This could be a... Wow, these guys put so much emphasis on shutting down Miracle. They're going to dual lane him mid. Well, Don't mind Shadow me. Shaman and Puck. Just going to try and harass him down. Get rid of that refraction as much as possible. There is a Shackles level 1 here. 
And uh, yeah, the pull goes his way. Uh, could get the potential double pull here. It looks like uh, Excessive just coming and being as uh, annoying as possible. He needs to be careful. He's got level 1 Impale. Has got Bootsy Telekinesis up, and he could actually be in trouble here. The Exalt damage has a lot of right clicks. And if I will get out of there with the boots, but not really a good trade for him. He's got he's going to chew through at least two or three Tangos just to heal himself back up. And not the start he was really hoping for. That's just unnecessary damage being taken there. Or eats through a second Tango. Sanking meanwhile going for a nice little pull here. Gets himself as level 2. Should look to stack this around that 52 second mark to start getting ready for later on when he can farm up the big stacks. And Well, all in all, uh, fairly standard start to this game. You've got your boots up on Hannah now. Didn't go for a boots first build. He went for that stout shield, so... Uh, this just means... Ooh, Shackles mid lane. This is just some casual harass here. Gehenna with uh, the mana pull. Just 110 mana, so a pretty big investment, but... Not too big a worry here. Bottle now picked up for your puck. And they've slowed down Miracle a little bit, but he's still got Fast Bottle. He's going for that super Fast Bottle rush. A uh, couple of more denies going Puck's way. Puck with eight denies already, so... Uh, a good game for the Puck, but we're going to see a regen room picked up by Miracle here at the top lane. He doesn't need to wait for his bottle. What? Okay, I guess he can use his bottle and save the regen for later. You may as well just proc the regen without your bottle, but it looks like he'll use his bottle charges, refill it, and then save the regen for later. Shadow Shaman coming in. Not going to be able to cancel any of that. And I guess he gets a, a free full bottle as well as a regen charge as well as bottle charges now. But Spends a bit more time out of lane. Misses some more experience. A bit more last hits. And you Dyer's see here. Missed probably about almost a full creep wave. And now that Puck's uh, ahead in the farm, it looks like... Is Shadow Shaman just leaving him? Like I guess TA's experience-wise, they're pretty even. Puck's slightly behind because of the dual lane. But Shadow Shaman's back now. No, he's not going to leave him. They can't really go for any kills here. This is just like a casual dual lane action going on. Carapace is now picked up for Nyx in the off lane, so he's a bit harder to, to, to kill and bring down. So all in all, Courier going to be a bit careful. He gets upgraded at just the right time. Shackles goes on Miracle, though. He's going to regen Marine. Actually, right clicks the Courier just once. Miracle going to turn this one around. He can actually fight this. Gets a nice side blades hit off. He's looking for the line to keep getting a few more. Unfortunately, not quite finding it. Puck is managing to maneuver around. Actually cops that one. One or two more, and he's getting low. The actual the Shadow Shaman goes in with another Shackles here. There's no... He's got a Magic Sting. May need to pop that with a Mel. Does do so. He's hiding, but there's a Sentry one. He'll be brought down first blood. Goes the way of RIQ. The Sunstrike going to miss on Jehenna. That would have been a kill as well in exchange. And that was a smoke, I believe, coming in from Scythe towards mid lane. The supports rotate in. The Sentry Ward was there, though. Um... Fortunate for, for Miracle. He thought he could just sit in the meld and be okay, but there was a sentry ward waiting for him to help bring him down. Shadow Shaman even had an extra one, so that was kind of a, a long shot to begin with, regardless. So, Clockwork at this offlane has gotten a lot of experience, not to mention farm. He's sitting on 14 CS, has boots and bottle already, and that's because Shadow Shaman dual lane mid, so it was something they had to give up for this. Nyx at the offlane is level 4 as well, but zero farm on him. And here comes the gank. They want to kill off this Nyx assassin. Fire strike, sunstrike to follow. The telekinesis is there. The damage will be enough. He doesn't get a chance to pop the carapace. He gets brought down. Regeneration. Nicely played. Dyer's bottom tower by sight to get attack. that kill. A much needed kill after that unfortunate situation in the mid lane. Denied. Miracle. He's uh, got his bottle wand. He's getting close to those boots. And the boots will help him out a bit in this mid lane. He's still doing well, all things considered. 13 last hits, 10 denies. He's behind the puck, but he's been up against a dual lane. He got roamed on by an AA as well, and he he did a really... Like, that that death of his, like, he almost managed to... Like, he was applying so much pressure, and if he survives, he has a regen rune. That's where he got a bit too greedy. Because he had that regen rune, he thought he could just trade hits for as long as possible, escape on a fine amount of HP after dealing a ton of harass, and then heal himself up using a regen rune. Didn't work out for him too well, though. But... He's now up to 17, 18 CS, so he's actually even with on CS with the Puck. So end of the day, they haven't really shut him down with this dual lane mid. Sure, they've killed him, but he's got Boots Bottle, equal CS to the Puck, and Puck, well, he's got Boots Bottle and a couple hundred gold as well. Korea, careful. Puck with a few extra denies, but very, very margin. I mean, this is a matchup that TA just straight up wins. That's why they did the dual lane mid, because TA would otherwise crush Puck in a 1v1. Now top lane. They're looking to go in here with the Ice Vortex to start things off, but the slow not enough for the Shadow Shaman to get there for his Shackles. Two, oh no, just one point in the Chilling Cut, so a 1-1-1 one, one, one build coming out. Meanwhile, offline Nyx, level 4 in a bit. Just Clockwork, ooh. 
Hoping for a six minute rune here. AA's nearby and rune is gonna spawn. AA gonna grab it. Rockworth was just a little swoop by. AA gets another Ice Vault, takes off. Cost him no mana because he had the regen, so. Nice to be a play there by the AA, pushes Clockwork away from the room. That was actually a he has a well, he had a full bottle, so he just uses one charge and it's still full. He's about to hit level six. That's a a worry for for RRQ. When this clockwork hits level six, he can find the pickoffs. He can be a big, big menace in general. And all he has to do is try and leech, although there's a lame ward here, so they know he's up here. They know he's trying to leech that experience to get his level six. And it looks like Rubik on the radiant side for Scythe has swung towards his mid lane himself. Vector with level 6 and phase boot, so Koala can get involved in these skills. He can come to these fights using that horn. And that's something which uh, Scythe should be should be wary of. Right? Should take note. Uh, and don't really have any heroes in much danger. And speaking of take note, let's... Yeah, Sanking has been left kind of un, gone un, unnoticed in the jungle here. Gets himself up to 800 gold. Hasn't stacked as much as maybe I expected, but... There's, there's still plenty more stacking potential for me. He finds another just dual stack here in the uh, medium camp. Rubik, bro, careful. Oh, Puck, Dream Call the mid lane. Not gonna matter. The Sunstrick gets dodged, I believe, by a phase shift. Don Juan's still in trouble. He's being slowed even further. The orb, he goes down to a now. clockwork rocket. Nicely played me. there. I think the Sunstrike got phase shifted, and oh, he still got chased down there. The clockwork rocket play was neat. If that rocket play doesn't hit, he orbs over here. Who knows what happens then? He did have a TP scroll. I'm not sure if he had actually had the mana to get out of that, but... Miracle helps get a kill there in the mid lane. Bit out, bit out of mana Dyer's here, but he can bottle crow if he wants to. He can hope for the 8-minute rune. Hannah's actually found the AA. Has a hookshot as well. I'm gonna trap him in the cogs. May not even need the hookshot. He's out of mana here. He will get the kill in the end. Oh. He'll pay for this with his life as Puck holds himself in. Hannah will go down to the Spectre. In the Probably worth it for the clockwork, but... Eh. It's kind of a 50-50 trade. You give a kill to the Spectre, but you get a kill yourself as an offlane hero. I'm not, I almost not really worth it, I want to say. Dyer's he can respawn then TP to any attack. lane and try and look for a hook sh hookshot kill now. Maybe catch someone by surprise, but in general you don't want to be giving kills to this, this Spectre of all heroes. So. Short -sighted of you. Invoker, he's got his Midas up and he's got those sun strikes. So you I mean, talk about the Spectre having the global potential with the horn. Similar case with, a, with an Invoker. He doesn't even have to, to reality in. And Hannah happy just to TP back top lane. Radiant Courier goes down. Okay. I'm, I'm going to blame Miracle for that one at the mid lane. They did get a kill here on the puck for it. Miracle brought down by the cold feet. Ancient no apparition game that one. So he kills, he dives the puck at mid lane. I think he lost his courier to get it. Which is unfortunate. But hey. Gets a kill on the puck. Invoker actually getting the last hit. So that's experience and gold. Going to the Invoker and well, as well as experience and gold going to the tier. Coming in range and they get a hook shot mid lane from downtown. Jehenna's got no way out of this one. He'll be brought down. Nice rotation coming in from Hannah. Now has the max battery assault. So his damage output's pretty ferocious. And YPRM, he takes over this top lane for a little bit. Wanting to get that level 6. Get Ice Blast coming into play. Spectre did use his horn. So he's just going to farm the jungle for a wave or two. Has enough for his drum. So he can get the phase drums online. Nyx now level 6. So we can see Nyx looking to rotate. He actually has money for his arcane boots as well. Does just need to pick up. Doesn't, can't really get to the side shop with uh, the invoker position where he is, so he may just have to go back to his uh, his secret shop. <laughs> Meanwhile, mid lane, Puck. Looks like he was trying to go for a bit of a rotation in. Waning Rift stolen, but that's a level 1 Waning Rift. He wants to steal that Illusionary Orb. That's level 4. Does a ton more damage. Level 1 Silence is doing 0.75 second duration, so not really a good spell to be having as a Rubik. Good news is Rubik's level 6. Compare that to this AA, who's just level 4.5. Uh, Shadow Shaman's level 6 himself, so we could be looking at RRQ trying to bring down some towers using those Serpent Wards. As Miracle will pick up an Ninja's Rune, bottles it up. He's going to be hitting level 9 in just a second. Trying to level up the Meld as well as having the Max Refraction already. Good to go. And Sanking, that's a hero we just haven't seen anything this entire game from him. And that's because he's farming, farming, farming. He's got that 10 ish minute Blink Dagger after this neutral camp here. Just 100 gold short, and the two big creeps will give him that. So then we can look towards him getting more involved. Not to mention this Invoker. I mean, he's been involved as far as Sunstrikes go, but that's been his main contribution. And there's your Blink Dagger, so possibly see a... I mean, he can even kill this Puck, really. They've got the burst damage to do it with a Refraction plus Melt it. You Blink Stun, and then immediately Telekinesis. Unless Puck has the, re the reflexes of a god and manages to dodge the Barrow Strike, he's dead. And it, bar a Blink into Instant Barrow Strike, I don't think you face shift that. Smoke rotation coming from RRQ towards the top lane, though. 
Nyx may look to lead things off. He can pop the Vendetta if he wants to, but... Only if the smoke's about to wear off does he really need to. And they've still got a bit of duration left on this. Problem is, this creep wave not really... Well, it's about to start pushing. And yeah, Clockwork is sandwiched now. He's very tanky, though. 1k plus HP with this Bracer. He'll see this gank coming soon. He needs to pop a Cogs very soon. Does do so. Serpent Wards get dropped here. They're happy to drop it for the kill because it's also going to mean a tower, potentially. This pop you on tower now. Under Siege here. Serpent Wards there. Creep wave coming in as well soon. Rubik trying to clear off some of these wards. Gets one of them. Bit of gold going his way, and he's going to look for some more here, but this tower going to probably go down regardless. One more right click. Radiant there we go. Plus 27 gold. Attack. It's a tower trade, though. Dire they want mid for it. They've got a refraction. They've got an excellent invoker. He's hit level 9. That means double forward spirit. This push, unless his TP's in, will also Dyer's succeed. There is a haunt from Spectre if they want to try and fight this one, but problem is Clockwork's going to respawn. He can TP mid. There are TP's coming in. This Clockwork may just TP mid. Join up for this fight. Clockwork is going to see a Dream Core go down. There we go. Clockwork keeping in the T1 tower. Spectre Haunt is there. Reality's in. Looking Radiant for Pelosi. Nick's Vendetta Assassin. Vendetta's in. He's trying to get the Impaler. I'm actually getting silenced. That's a bit. Carapace gets dropped now. They've lost two, though. Great initiation from RQ. Clockwork's got him, but the fight's already lost. The Epicenter. The great AoE Ice Blast coming in from the Ancient Apparition. They destroy four heroes. Rubik wasn't there. Not that it would have made much Dyer's difference. Tower, tower gets denied. RQ. Come out on Dyer's top. Bottom tower is under attack. And that Spectre. Whoa, picks up a band of Elven skin. No Radiance play coming out this game, perhaps. Could just look to pick up a fast Yasha with this. But boy, oh boy, what a disaster in the mid lane. I was looking good for Scythe for a second, I, th I thought. The Clockwork respawned at the right time so we could actually TP in and help out, but they got caught out under the tower. Two hero Dream Call, and then Nyx Assassin comes in with a multiple hero Impale. Puck's now got a Blink Dagger online. Oh boy. That's Radiant's that's a cause for concern for Scythe. They're going to start attack. realizing, crap, we're going to need BKBs and multiple BKBs. Pelosian will go for a Necrobook first. I mean, BKBs we're looking at like later on in the game, but this TA may have to go like phase drums BKB or maybe just straight BKB. Just because of all this magic damage. I mean, talked about a bit earlier with this draft that RQ have. The Nyx, the AA, the Puck, the Shadow Shaman. This is a must-buy BKB kind of game. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Looks like Scythe. I mean, after how badly that last push went, surprised to see them going for another one. This is maybe ill-advised. All ultis are all up apart from the haunt. That's Dyer's 25 seconds away, and Spectre does have the money for Yash. Also about to hit level 11, so he's getting pretty scary. And this top T1 tower being chipped and chipped away at. Oh, they're going to find the Spectre. That'd be a big kill if they can get it, but here's your Nyx Assassin. He needs to hit this Impel. He doesn't actually get it off a little bit later. The Spectre got the first call on the Rubik, though. Spectre's still alive and tanky. He's got the drums here if he wants to proc it. There's a TP out of temp from Chibix. There's going to be a Dream Call to cancel it. Three heroes dead. RRQ. They strike, and they strike hard at the top lane. Yasha now up on the Spectre. Shadow Shaman going for this bottom tier 1 tower. May actually get this. Has to be careful. He's going to go for a straight TP out the Sun Strike. going to finish him off, though. Oh, should have maybe gone for a Hex first. Now these Serpent Wards will probably get cleaned up as well. Miracle just taking them down one by one. Oh, this tower may need to get denied here. Pops another refraction so we can one-shot some of these wards. Yep, this is going to be uh, all Serpent Wards taken out. Miracle with the tower deny as well. Radiance bottom tower has been Small denied. victory going Scythe's way, considering how badly everything else is going there. This Spectre is so fat. You know, one thing I never got is, like, level 2 Haunt does not scale well at all. You get one extra second duration. If you've got a Radiance, sure, but he doesn't have, like, even or maybe a Diffusal Blade, you get the feedback. But in general, like, getting the level 2 ulti on Spectre, I feel like getting the second point of Dispersion is almost better. It just doesn't scale that well. Like, the cooldown stays the same, the mana cost stays the same, nothing really improves apart from that one second of duration. It's one of those weird things. Like, some heroes' ultimates just don't scale well at all. Enigma Black Hole is another good example. You get a bit extra damage, but Enigma Black Hole is not really about the damage. And you you level up your Black Hole, suddenly it goes from 200 or... Like, the mana cost increases dramatically. You have to be really careful about uh, leveling it up, because that mana cost at level 2 is a big, big jump. But there's no Enigmas in this game. We're going off topic here. There is going to be... I wonder if RRQ can even think about Roshan. They've got the Serpent Wards. They haven't got the best damage outside of that. Like, no Medallion... No minus armor like from a TA, so they could if they commit everything to it, but it wouldn't even be that fast, even with Serpent Wards being used. Scythe now. They smoked up on the prowl, looking for some some more action here. Gonna meet up towards the top lane. Wanna make sure that Clockwork's at least nearby, so if they find a fight, get some kills. 
Well, find just maybe get get into a bit of trouble. They've got the clockwork nearby enough. Oh, the Sunstrike. Not going to see anyone at the Roshan pit, so they know. Okay, Rocket Flare. Oh, the timing of it. I think that saw one or two of those heroes as they smoked up. And, well, this top tier one tower is very low. Miracle going to commit to this one. He wants to go in. He's picked up a Mithril Hammer. I'm thinking BKB. Uh, straight Desolate would be very, very risky. He gets the top tier one tower. Top tower has fallen. And that looks like Arak, you going to TP the tier two. They Vendetta in. Nyx Assassin. Doesn't look this detection. He sees all this. And AA could look to throw an Ice Blast. They go in Miracle. The Impel is going to land. The Mount of Burn to follow. The Ice Blast is there. Puck goes in. Has a Dream Call if they will use on the Invoker. This is another... <laughs> Team fight victory for RIQ. And every team fight they're winning, they're killing these key heroes. They're killing their invoker. They're killing the TA. They're going to kill the courier as well with one more right click. He can't get it though. Whew. Oh, blink in from Puck. He gets it. One more right click. The two core heroes go down. The courier as well to follow. Absolute disaster for Scythe. This, this is RIQ making a statement. They want this grand finals to go to the full three games. We've been privileged with a, a three game third place decider. Titan Execration went the distance. And right now it looks like. RRQ and Scythe may do the exact same thing as well. Not bad, not bad indeed. Spectre now. Didn't go for the full Manta style. Goes back for a Vitality Booster. The good old value booster. This Spectre is so farm though. He's 8k net worth. Actually behind the Invoker. Invoker did go Midas. Is he... I think that was his Necro 1 on the Courier. I have to say, he doesn't look like he's an 8k net worth hero. That would have been his Necro book. Is it just, what, two, three? Maybe even mean like a Necro 2 on the career or something. But we'll find out once it respawns. And Clockwork Rocket once again scouting out Roshan, making sure that they know what RQ up to. Puck's finished boots at travel now as well. TP's himself down the bottom lane with them. He'll just look to push this out. Keep on farming, applying pressure across the board, and it forces Scythe, Scythe to come back to Fen Lane, push things out. And yeah. Alright. Uh, Cane Boots now up on now Rubik. Small, small pickups for Scythe. They need much bigger than this. Four stuffs, Blink Daggers. Sanking has his Blink. He's going to maybe go back for some Arcane Boots in a second as well. Depending where... I mean, well, yeah, I think Arcane Boots still at this stage of the game. You've got one on the Rubik, but having some more definitely won't hurt. And RQ feeling like they're the stronger team. They're going to look to commit to this mid lane. The tower already so low. They don't need to drop the Serpent Ward. Well, they feel like they have to. Spectre Invis on the back lines here. He's got a haunt, not to mention a lot of other items which make him very tanky and hard to deal with. And he gets the vision and intel that RIQ need to push this mid lane. He sees everything going on. He knows where the heroes are positioned in. He can decide if they look to engage or not. Puck may look to go on Pelosin here. Not nearby enough. He's actually still at the bottom lane. He's going to TP in now. Ooh, TP gets cancelled. Yeah, Puck actually TP cancelled the bottom lane. There's a clockwork hookshot. Almost actually kills the Puck. About to say, that TP cancelled all of a sudden here. Looks like Pelosi in trouble. Mana Burn Impale, that'll bring him down. Koala with the Invis Room helping to set things up. Sanking gets a nice Kuro Bar Strike. The Impale followed up as well. Spectre in trouble. He gets lift up in the air. He's under the tower, taking a lot of damage. Base boots is there. One more right click from the tower. Not going to be enough. 20 HP, the Clockwork Rocket Flare. Finishes him off. That's a mega kill streak being ended. 700 gold going the way of the Clockwork. Bad fight for RRQ. Completely unnecessary. They do kill the Invoker and the TA again. Every fight, these two heroes are dying. TA died under the T1 tower. Invoker, attack. well, we saw what happened to him. So as while it didn't go well for RIQ, it's still like, well, their bad fights still look pretty good when you're killing Radiant's off the Invoker and TA. The two attack. carry heroes for Scythe are dying, and that and we're calling that a bad fight for RIQ. Just because the Spectre died, and somewhat unnecessarily, but... Invoker, the courier respawns, and that's his Necro 3. That's what he was waiting for. So he had two Necro Book recipes on the courier. And then he just managed to buy the third one. So he's got Necro 3 now. But is it going to up in time? Necro book actually not bad against Spectre. Can proc on the disper on the dispersion and... Uh, oh, especially Spectre to go Radiant. You kill that blue Necro and suddenly Spectre takes a ton of damage. But he's not going Radiant. So he's going for a more just tanky oriented build. And he's almost got his Manta style up now. The Miracle's completed his BKB. That's probably where he thought it was been invincible in that last fight. I think he had it when he went in. He, he didn't get to use it though, so it must have been chain disabled. Shadow Shaman obviously great at disabling heroes, preventing them from using BKBs. Oh, bottom lane for Losin. He's got 1300 HP. Puck can't get this kill on his own, but Shadow Shaman is nearby in the trees. Silence. Being met up with here. Does actually go in. Just a bit of harass. Forces out a Necrobook cast. Uh-oh. 
They put out one. Invoker brings down the Nyx Assassin. Looks like Shadow Shaman may take a fall as well. RQ, don't do this to me. We saw this last game where RQ had a great start and managed to throw away a bit of a lead. Let's hope we don't see something similar against Sand King. Virus Dragon going to catch out the puck here. Puck may look for the Sand King kill. The A Ice Blast will help him out though. And yeah, gets the Sand King kill. Puck now going to TP out from the tree. Kind of with the completed pipe. Ooh. Saw the AA with that rocket flare, but saw him just as he disappears from the TP scroll. And well, looks like Scythe wanna to commit to this bottom tier one tower, although unfortunately for them, Araq are all respawning, not to mention Spectre's ready to go. He's got his manta style, he'll TP home, pick up the manta, and he's got an ulti ready to go. He'll probably Dyer's start by walking his way down bottom. Or will he just he may even just Dyer's grab ulti? Dire fortification, puck, blink. <laughs> he's trying to bait out spells. He orbs to the side, blinks in. I think it's, is that Don Juan? Yeah, Don Juan. Bit of a, a flashy player. Looking for those those fancy moves, fancy footwork, whatever, what have you. But it looks like Scythe for now decided just to back off, play things as safely as possible. They don't want to overcommit to too much here. RQ. Oh, what are they, where are these? Where are these like random sunstrokes? Oh, that was a Roshan pit. I hear the sunstrokes and like. Hear Puck jaunting around. I'm like, where are these spells actually going? TA. Oh man, miracle. Oh, where's the shackles? Doesn't come in time. He had the hex, but didn't get the shackles off. Bex are going to haunt in. Look for the kill of Miracle. Not enough damage just yet. Maybe the Ice Blast will proc him over. Rubik goes down. Miracle in the founder. No, Ice Blast were off, so he's going to be okay. Meanwhile, looks like a TP out coming. It's not going to be enough. There's a day gone up on Puck. Don Juan. Speaking of flashy, he gets the flashy little laser beam shooting item. And, well, they're not done. They're going to clear, clear off some forward spirits here. Watch out for the sun strike. Ooh, gonna be just fine. Actually, <laughs> poor AA walks into it. He's got nine urn charges. He had like ten before that. He has been involved in so many kills and not even had to use these urn charges. So now he's like, okay, guys, we can stick around. I've got so many urn charges that we can just heal ourselves up for days. And it looks like they want to go Roche. Puck, once again. Blink forward, orb out. Into the Roche and they go with the Serpent Wards, perhaps. Or do they? Maybe thinking twice. They decide against it. Yeah, Sunstrike's checking out Roshan. I think they're just a bit too afraid. They'll throw the Serpent Wards just to clear out the ancients to make their life a bit easier. No, I'm, I'm okay with this usage. It's quietly, you can see, already struggling to take out this ancient. Gets a Chilling Touch as well to go with this. and It just keeps Scythe guessing, like, where are they? Are they Roshan? Do we need to check Roshan again? They have to keep throwing Rocket Players. They have to keep playing fairly cautiously. But they get these ancients after a bit of a bit of struggle. Koala down to very low HP. Shadow Shaman, man. Oh, no. AA, where are you going? You got the urn charges. That's what Spectre wants right now. He's going to TP home, so... But unfortunately, he doesn't even have Haunt to come to a fight, although there aren't any fights brewing. No towers under siege. Just pushing out the top lane, but the tier 2 tower will not be attempted. The one tier 1 are remaining still bottom lane. Is under attack. Pretty even on towers right now. Looking at the gold graph, it is only a 2k gold lead for RRQ. 3,000 experience. I mean, you got an Invoker with the, the Necrobook. You got your TA starting to get some decent farm here, so... Side still in this game, especially after that last good engagement or two. Puck. Orbing, just scouting out to see. Oh, his first one thing he's looking to do is scout out Sand Kings up in the trees. Another thing is just getting a better position to engage, and he's in a perfect position maybe for a blink initiation. RQ have backed off, picks up himself a dag on two now. And Clockwork has not thrown any rocket flares up his direction. This is potentially a good fight for RQ. They need an AA, an AA Ice Blast to help them out. Pipe gets popped as well. Puck. Won't have much magic damage. The AI spots there. The Dream Call as well to follow. TA immediately BKBs. No actual damage being done apart from through the Invoker. He's taking a bit of damage here. Deafening Blast kills me onto the Spectre. Spectre trying to fish him off. Will do so. Now he runs into the trees. That's going to be him scurrying away. Meanwhile, it's going to be Hannah fighting it out with the Ancient Apparitions. But Sankin gets off an Epicent. Doesn't do any damage with it though. Ends up going down himself. A two for one trade so far. TA in trouble now. No BKB. He's been stunned up once. Nice Vortex on the ground here. Miracle. <laughs> There's no escaping, surely. There we go. Orb down, impel to finish him off. Three for one in the end. RRQ just looking at just a bit scarier and tankier with all their item pickups right now. And Invoker being focused down first. He needs a BKB himself. I feel like that's going to be his next Dyer's item. Like BKB, then you go towards like your side of the vice, your Aghanim Scepter, what have you. But he needs a BKB to stay alive in a team fight. He gets focused down too easily by the nukes and just the lockdown that this RRQ team have. Bottom T1 tower should get denied by Koala. Get to deny him. He's up to a good chunk of gold here with his Manta. 
Vit Booster, 2.4k on top of that. And Ruby's actually stolen Vendetta. Freedom on, on a bit of a, a rotation through the enemy jungle. Going to see what he can find. Is there any detection? There's a few sentries here and there. Looks like uh, Shadow Shaman being the main carrier, but um, if he's not careful, he'll walk into this sentry on the cliff, but he's not going to find anyone in the jungle in the trees right now. Once again, Roshan scouting, never ending. Oh, Sunstrike the <laughs> The Vendetta bonus damage with a Sunstrike plus Hookshot. And the Fade Bolt. That was nasty. AA takes a lot of damage to AA. He went for a 4 staff before the Ag Scepter, so not the straight Ag Thrust. But he's still got so many kills that this Ag Scepter is going to be up at a perfectly reasonable time. Probably not till after the 30 minute mark, but that's still very reasonable for an Ancient Apparition. Jehenna. You buy. And, uh, it looks like with AA on the sidelines, they want to push. No Ice Blast makes this a lot trickier. They pop the pipe. This Dyer's push is actually really annoying to deal fortified. with. Necrobooks plus pipe plus forward spirit. spirit. The big old minion stack pushing it. Oh, Vendetta towards the bottom lane. Don Juan. There's a sun strike. Oh, it's Radiant's not going to land though. That Vendetta hits so hard. If that, if he doesn't move there, if that sun strike hits, he's dead. You Vendetta hit plus telekinesis. And the Sunstrike lands, that's a kill on Puck. That was almost a really well executed game. I mean, I don't, you can't blame the Invoker for missing there. Puck actually unexpectedly moved forward. I mean, it's always good to have unpredictable movement against a uh, Exod Invoker, just to make it a lot trickier to hit those Sunstrikes. But, hey. Narrowly misses a kill there. Good attempt coming out from, from Freedom, as well as uh, Pelosin on the Invoker. Pelosin does have that BKB I talked about, and... Oh, Nyx Assassin does find TA here, but where's the actual backup? They're pretty far away. There is boots to travel on your puck. I'm making their way down here with a smoke here. Four staff alive, and uh-oh. There's a Spectre Horn. I think that's maybe for top lane. Oh, not going to come here. The rotation gets in. It's Miracle who's been blinked. A four staff hex, it looks like. He gets brought down. Where is that Spectre? He's actually... That's what he used the ulti for. Trying to escape over the trees. And we'll get himself out of there. He's going to TP from the high ground. Clockwork Rocket Player is any disable? No, not in time. Sanking, not in range for a Burrow Strike. So Spectre gets out of there. I think he wanted to go to the TA. I'm surprised he didn't actually reality to the TA there. I think he must have not. Attack. Well, he did see. His teammates knew he was there, but. He popped the horn, but didn't actually uh, reality there. But suddenly Spectre surviving 3.4k gold. This Spectre is so tanky. Be very tricky to deal with, but BKBs is somewhat the answer to spec the damage output, like dispersion being blocked. Although it's not a radiant inspector, so there's slightly less magic damage coming out. Well, invoker now 1.5k gold. What's he thinking of next? You know, the level 14, he could get the boots of travel, but I imagine he's thinking he's going to need a hex at some point in this game. Good against the Puck. Puck who now has a Dagon 3. He's going to be zapping people all over the place. Pew, pew, pew. Smoke up. Going going to be the call from Scythe. I think worried that Roshan may be going down soon. They're pinging towards the Roshan pit. They can always throw rocket flares. Yeah, they will do so. Just give them a bit of vision ahead of time. Scouts no one in the pit. They can sort of guess exactly where they may be. Like seeing behind the Spectre at the Ancients. Maybe in their neutrals. They actually have this observe ward, so they know no one's actually in the neutrals at these camps. So that gives them some good information. Are Scythe going for this? Miracle. Oh, Invoker goes in. Has a Necrobook. Has Ford Spirits as well. Summons a Necrobook. Get your Ford Spirits up. Alacrity coming in as well. I don't think RRQ know this is going on. A Ice Blast scouts it out. Great bit of play there coming in from the A. He sees it. Impale in from the Knicks. Going to be a cog. They're just going to zone him out. Spectre going to horn his way in. The Roshan still being focused. Miracle wants to commit to this. There's an Epis and a blink from the Sand King. He's trying to bring down the Spectre. But this Spectre is so tanky. He's picked up a late game Relic here. He's still going for the Radiant. Aegis is on the side of the Radiant now. Looks like a double kill going to be coming in here. Dominating streak going the way of the Puck. And now the chase is on immediate buyback from the Puck as he gets brought down. TA trying to bring down the Ancient Apparition. Still has the Aegis here, Miracle. He wants YPRM. Not going to get him here. Fadeball gets thrown out here. The Spectre getting very low. Tried to bring down Pelosin, but couldn't do so. The Ghost will come at the right time. We'll get the TP out, it looks like, just in time. Meanwhile, Shackles goes out. Invoker going to be the target here from this one. Oh, sorry, Rubik the target. He will be brought down. Gets the Shadow Shaman in return. RRQ now going to retreat back. Who are they looking for here? The Invoker. Nearby, very low, but they don't actually see him. It looks Radiant's like TA did lose the Aegis in that fight. Attack. Managed to get himself back towards this bottom lane, but... Very all over the place fight. And Spectre with like a... 
Sure, this is a late Radiance, but hey, you get this later on when you're tankier, it's still a pretty good item pickup to have. And, well, Koala. 6, 1, and 15. This Spectre has been involved in so much of the action today. Not the uh, traditional, let's farm, farm, farm kind of Spectre. Not to say that's actually a traditional, I mean, that's like you're going back a good year or two, back when pe teams used to do your Warlock Spectre dual lanes. This is, in the current day and age, you need carries who can fight and fight early. That's where your Spectres go, phase drums, get involved as soon as they hit level 6 and there are kills presenting itself. Gem now, picked up by the Nyx. He's been dead it up, and with the AA Ice Plus, they can look for kills all over the map. They want to get this AA, his Aghanim Scepter now. That's the next big thing for RRQ. Forget farming your Pucks, Dagon 5, whatever it may be. <laughs> get the AA, his Ag Scepter. That's a much bigger item to be picking up. Clockwork. There's no Ice Plus, oh, there's no Ice Plus, but there's a Puck blinking in here. The Orb coming out as well. There is a pipe now being popped. He's going to look to turn and fight this one. The Assassin pops a Carapace. Clockwork's still low. The Dreamcock comes up. There's your Spectre Haunt. The pipe's still online. May just look to hook out his way out of this one, but not going to be able to do so. Sand King, Forest Break onto the Nyx Assassin. Stuns himself on the Carapace, it looks like. Actually, I think he just gets stunned up. Three kills going the way of RRQ. Double kill to the Spectre. That's his Radiance. That's trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. And Scythe, well... Not sure exactly what they look to do here. Invoker looking just... He's the Rat Dota expert right now. He's at the top lane. Gonna push things out. Koala taking a lot of damage. Gonna be careful. I think he killed the blue Necrobook. Now Ford Spirit gets put on the Spectre here. Sunstrike could ruin his day, but the Invoker he's been shackled up. That's actually Jehenna catching him out from the back line. Comes in with the swoop around him. Well, Spectre knows what he was doing there. Almost at baiting in some ways. Keeping the Invoker around a bit longer. Maybe with the slight hope of getting a kill on the Spectre, but not gonna be the case. Koala now. Radiance back at base. He'll wander back to pick it up. And Invoker going down. Five deaths on him. Seven deaths on TA. Miracle is zero and seven this time around. Uh-oh. You've got to worry for Scythe. They're down 12 kills. The goal graph is like, hey, this game's even. The XP graph, not so much. This game's 10k experience in RRQ's favor. But just looking at things where they stand, Spectre being this farm, you do feel that it's RRQ doing well. But you've got an Invoker who's actually more farm than the Spectre. And TA's on par with the Puck, so in some ways... Scythe is farming well. Like, even your Clockwork with a pipe and working on a BKB is farming well. You get a Sanking with a, a Blink Dagger and almost a completed full stuff. Just 70 gold away from that. So Scythe are getting items up. The problem is, like, your TA, sure, you got BKB Manta, very defensive, but your damage output isn't quite there. Invoker's, he hits and does decent damage with this Exorp build, but he needs more on top of this. Gets the boots to travel. Gonna probably go for a side the Vice, I would say, next. Maybe the Ag Scepter. But Scythe the Vice, definitely useful against the Spectre. Just take him out of the fight for that, even that small period of time. Puck now, Blink to the high ground. He's got a gem on himself here. Rubik, be a bit careful about contesting with this Puck. Puck gonna get a D-Room. It looks like he, what did he steal? Full orb. Telekinesis there, the hook shot! Where was that hook shot going? Hannah, Hannah, Hannah! No, oh, the Deathling Blast. Oh, actually, they're gonna get him. They managed to just focus him down just enough after the respawn Puck. Not going to buy back or anything. The Spectre Haunt not going to be used to much avail here. Actually, he does reality in at the last second. I think this. I think it was at Fountain when he used the Haunt, so he just wanted to make use it as a free TP out of base. Does need to be a bit careful there, but Puck not able to get the Blink off after Phase Shift. Either just took some instant damage or maybe was on cooldown. And with 65 seconds Puck on the sidelines, he's got no buyback on cooldown as well as no money, so... I have to know, I'm not sure if Scythe have kept track and are aware of that, but in theory they, they should be aware of it and they could just look to push down this top lane. It looks like they're doing exactly that. Five here is positioned up top. Spectre Illusion actually kills off a Necro 3. That's pretty good value. 200 gold for Koala and, well, you lose an Illusion, which is about to expire regardless. It'll be a five minute Rosham respawn from here. So it'll be a pretty far, one minute past when the Sundial ends. So anywhere from zero seconds to attack. three minutes. So a relatively fast Roshan respawn. Dyer's Invoker gets the last hit on the tower, so that increases his net worth even further. He's getting filthy, filthy farm. Koala now at the mid lane. He's gonna throw down a Spectral Dagger. Look to increase his farm. They're gonna go high ground. Puck's got no buyback. They're not going to get Raxus here, I don't think, but there's no Spectre Haunt, there's no Puck Radiance for 10 seconds. They may get at least a tier 3 tower out of this. There's an Alacri on the tier at the top, and Spectre Force just to maybe go in here. Can pop his Manta style, get some illusions here to defend. The Ford Spirits are there on the high ground as well. Looks like now Scythe with uh, Puck respawning will back off, but decent damage done. They'll TP out, maybe? 
No, just wander back, stick together, don't want to get anyone caught out unnecessarily, and Puck is actually on the hunt. He smoked up, looking for a catch-off, and he may find one. Rubik gets Dream Cold. That's a small loss, though. You going to steal the Dream Cold? Yeah, I won't even get a chance to use it, though. You took that jape too far. Not a big loss for Scythe. Not a loss they really care about. What did Arak you get off this pickoff? Mm, no Roshan to get. Maybe they can use it to go into another pickoff here. Sankin gets a stun off here. Oh, going on the next Assassin. Goes into a Carapace. Spectre perhaps an ultimate. Oh, there's a great blink waiting rift. The puck has gone in. He can't get Pelosian though. Pelosian's BKB, but the Spectre right click damage is still there. Definitely Blast Mida. Catches out. Double kill going the way. Almost getting a triple kill. He gets the puck as well. Oh, no. Puck actually still alive. The four triple kill. Triple kill for Pelosian. He paid for it with his life. In comes the TA. Looking for the AA. Gets the AA. Spectre now going to Manta, but he's still trapped in the cold. One more melt track. We'll finish off the Spectre. He goes down to the melt. It's a team wipe. Four for five here. Amazing wombo combo coming in from the Invoker. The Deathning Blast Media destroyed RRQ. He killed both the squishy supports and finished off the entire puck almost completely. His Ford Spirit got the last right click. And an absolute messy, messy fight with bloods being spilt on both sides. But it's Scythe, who at this point somewhat down, get a one, one man advantage at the end. Not to mention it's TA who's left standing, gets himself some big, big kills. And Invoker. With a triple kill, suddenly has 2.5k gold with an ultimate orb, so even though he dies there, he gets a lot of farm out of it. Scythe are not going down without a fight. We saw a 42 minute game one, much longer than your average game, and suddenly... Whoa, 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 let's take a look at that again. Scythe are ahead. 1k gold lead. This is against a late game Spectre here. I mean, this is the problem with RQ somewhat, is they've got no other late game. Puck does okay-ish late game, but he hasn't even gone Hex. This Puck is probably thinking, maybe I should have got a Hex, guys. I think Puck has made a big mistake not getting the Scyther Vice. Scyther Vice, very useful against BKB carries. Not to say it's a counter to B BKB carries, but it's very useful if you're trying to gank them. Sure, you can BKB in a fight to prevent yourself getting hexed, but if you're initiating with a Blink hero like a Puck, Blink Scythe is the counter to heroes like Life Stealer to pre pre prevent him from raging, and any BKB carry, you initiate with a Blink Hex, potentially kill them off right from the get-go. And that's where this Puck spending all this money on a Dagon 3 may be a big, big mistake. Screeching. Grabbed himself a haste room, orbs his way out, but... Scyther. Still in this game. The, the damage output from RQ is just getting less and less impressive the longer this goes on. I mean, Spectre's gonna have a heart tomb, which makes him tankier, but I feel like he needs a butterfly. At the same time, he goes for a butterfly, that's where TA says, you go butterfly, I go MKB. He may just be saving this gold just to see if Spectre goes for something like a butterfly. Boom, there he goes. And there's a Scythe now. But Pelosian, if he wants to buy it, may be thinking buyback, but... The Hex is a pretty big pickup here. We'll see exactly where he goes. The damage up of this die team, I mean, they've got a Spectre whose damage is getting diminished. There is a Shadow Shaman who does decent damage with the Serpent Wards, but... Even that, not as scary as it, as it once was. Rock it on. TA. What is going to be the item choice? 5k gold, and... If you're going to go flying out, it's going to be a Heart of Tarrasque being picked up by your Spectre. And there we go, Invoker does get his, his Sheep Stick. And it's off. Hannah's almost completed. Actually, not going for BKB. I saw the Yoga Club earlier. I thought it was going to be a BKB, but he's going Ag Scepter. I mean, I'm kind of 50 50 on this. The BKB is really nice for the magic immunity, but Ag Scepter, the cooldown decrease is just so sweet. And he's so he's pretty tanky, Hannah, at this point. He could stay alive for multiple hook shots in a team fight. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not convinced this is the right way to go, but I'm also not convinced that it's the wrong way to go. I'm going to be neutral. I'm feeling like I'll just sit on the fence all day today. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's the pro player, not me. And, uh, Scythe, trying to use uh, their core heroes at top lane as bait for me. TA picked up an Eagle Song, so it will be a butterfly from Miracle. Not not deciding to wait things out. It will be, well, I guess the Spectre is committed to a heart now, so he doesn't need the MKB and Can easily go into an MKB after this butterfly. A bit of an interesting pickup. The Spectre right click damage is there, but it's actually not that much. Radiance it's not like you're like a faceless void or some attack. really fast right clicker. A lot of Spectre's damage is from the Radiance, the Dispersion, and being tanky. Sunstrike catches up Don Juan. Decent chunk fallen. of damage to him. He's still got three bottle charges up his sleeve, and are they going to go for a bit of base trade action here? Scythe have, yeah, they're going to start TPing now. Serpent Wards are online, and what are you doing, Johanna? Your team's abandoning you. Serpent Wards get stolen. Actually, the hookshot going to miss. Nice four staff going to keep himself alive, and Don Juan. I'm gonna, well, these seven ones should just get cleared off, but they're not actually. Radiant's bottom tower not is under in. attack. They're so scared right now. They see Spectre top, but he can always horn in. Only now do they feel like, okay, maybe it's safe to clear off these serpent wards, and they don't do 
that much damage at this stage of the game. It's not the end of the world. Hannah, oh! Puck. He's doing this, this sneaky little all back blink in and like Dagon or whatever it may be. And it's something which Scythe just can't quite respond to fast enough. I mean, you can't respond in general, like if you're, if you're fast enough with it. 22 to 32, the kill score, and Scythe, I'm wondering, yeah, they're still ahead by about 1k gold. Experience, not in their favor, though. That's a 6k experience level for IRQ, but at this point in the game, how much does experience actually matter? You're looking at most heroes hitting their core levels. Sanking wants his level 3 ultimate, maybe. Shadow Shaman wants his, but that's a dire hero. Clockwork, yeah, level 3 ult is a, a little better, with the extra half a second that's done, but in general, most heroes are as as leveled as they need to be. You've got your core heroes like a level 19 Invoker, level 22 TA. They're looking all tanky and, and juiced up with all the extra stat points they get. So. For, for RRQ, I feel like they've stuck with kind of three late game utility heroes with Nyx Assassin not really scaling amazingly well. He offers a lot of lockdown, but when heroes have BKBs, that gets less scary. And these BKBs still 8 seconds on Invoker, TA on 7 seconds. So considering they've had these BKBs for a while, it could be a lot worse. Oh, Sunstrike almost clipping the uh, Shadow Shaman. And this Roshan back up, and Johanna's thinking, I've got my Serpent Wards, but can we actually do this? Roshan getting tankier and tankier by the minute. Not something that can be as so easily brought down at this stage of the game. Especially, their right click damage is so non existent. It's the Serpent Wards. Spectre isn't the best hero to kill Roshan with, so they've got no minus armor as well. Killing Roshan's actually quite difficult for RRQ. They'd have to use Serpent Wards more or less, and even with Serpent Wards, it's still not going to be that easy at this stage of the game. TA with a double damage rune. Last time they got Roshan was just because they busted Scythe. When Scythe were going for Roshan. Well, Scythe actually ended up getting the Aegis regardless. But that was how the fight there began. TA completes the butterfly now, so... Scythe looking to take this the distance. Man, <laughs> I got more Dota to cast in like an hour. Like, not to mention potential game 3 and then there's WPC starting tonight. Dota, Dota all night long. We are going to see Puck just clear off some forward spirits. He did go for a BKB this Puck. I mean, I guess he makes sure that he can go into a fight and not have to worry about getting hexed because he's initiating, not getting initiated on. Like, Invoker very rarely will go in with a blink. Silence. I do. This Puck still needs a hex, though. Like, at this point in the game, like, if this game's going to go another 5 10 minutes, hex has to be coming up at some point. Are they actually going to try to kill this Spectre? Have they. Need an invoker with a hex. They've got boots of travel on the invoker, so he could theoretically TP in, but he needs something to TP onto. Which with the creep web down. Doesn't exist. Well, Necrobook just being used to push out bottom lane and they feel they can go Roche, it's being pink. So everyone to go down, Sunstrike gonna scout it out. Okay. Decent damage up, but they can't doing this well enough, I guess. Rocket Blade goes in to follow things up here, and with the urn charges. ASL with six urn charges, they can just heal people up from all of this this little chip damage that comes out. Tornado gonna go flying in. Here we go. There's a hex dying things off on the Nyx Assassin. He gets forced up the way. Nicely played by the Shadow Shaman. Now your Spectre, he's gonna pop the horn. He had Serpent Wards get dropped here. That's a Radiant Stolen. That's a Rubik's Sentry Ward. Sanky Epicenter. Burst Strike. And he misses people with the Burst Strike. Doesn't get the stun off. And with that, Puck gets himself a double kill. Spectre's cleaning up as well. The Invoker's taking a fall. Miracle on the run. Hasn't even used his BKB. Hasn't had a chance to. And all he can do is just run and get the hell out of here. I think just hoping that the Shadow Shaman doesn't get him with the lockdown. Shadow Shaman shows up. The Spectre Radiant damage is there. The Sentry being used as well. They're going to lose him. Meanwhile, Clockwork died to the Spectre Radiance, I believe. Or even the Puck finishing off. That's a team wipe. An RRQ that can finish off Roshan, but they might just be thinking, let's go down mid lane. I'm not sure if they'll get many better opportunities. You can see the buybacks in Voker, yes. Sanky, yes. Everyone else? Big bet? No. Oh, TA, 80, 85 gold. So that's... Yeah, it's not coming fast enough. He's, he's not going to have it before he respawns, I don't think. Buyback Radiance coming from the Invoker. He's going to look to delay attack. this using Tornadoes, EMPs, Meteors, Deafening Blast, whatever it may be needed. I'm actually alone, and he looks like he will be... Whoa, blink in from the, from the Puck. No follow-up, though. The Puck, the king of that fight, it proves. And AA. You got this, AA. Solo Roche. If he dies here, that would be pretty sad. Yeah, he's going to earn himself up. Play it safe. No, no reason to... To give away a foolish, foolish death. Yeah. RQ put themselves back in the driver's seat with that team wipe. Until then, it was not looking all too convincing for them. But boy, oh boy, that's a. Roshan I mean, this looks like a big dip, but this is still a 4k gold lead at 40, at 45, 46 minutes in. That's not a big gold lead. 
Experience is uh, considerably bigger. That's a 15 to 20k experience lead. And that goes to show, it's not so much the... The level advantage doesn't really matter at this point, but it goes to show that it's RRQ winning all the fights, because they're getting all this experience from winning team fights, getting tons of hero kills. And that just... that's it, It's sort of an after effect of the fact that they're winning the game because they're winning all the fights. I don't think so much... It's not so much a case of, hey, these extra levels are going to help them win fights. It does give them Shadow Shaman level 3 Serpent Wards. AA hitting level 16. That's probably the biggest of these... Uh, the hero levels they've just picked up. So we've got a level 3 Ice Blast now. It gets a 1 second... Oh, well, actually, no, it's se Scepter Duration is the same at all levels. So that's only the Unsceptered Duration that increases. But it increases the damage. Also, the hit points for the kill goes up to 12% for the threshold. So he'll be, he'll be pretty happy with hitting that. Rocket player flying out, scouting things out as much as possible. And, uh, alrighty. Looks like uh, Ice Blast going to maybe catch up the Puck here. Oh, well, sorry, the Puck is his own teammate. He was looking for the Sanking. What am I talking about? They expected with a Radiance damage. Could see Chibix go down. Oh, so one. Yeah, we'll go down to the waning rip. Spectre couldn't quite find him out there. Where did the actual Spectre? We're going for someone else here, it looks like. We're going to see uh, Pelosi. You have to be a bit careful here. Where's that gem? They're pinging it. They saw the Ghost Walk for a second there, and the gem's on the Puck, so Puck needs to get up there, and, well, he just wants to take deal with these Necrobooks for now. We'll handle them pretty well. Pretty comfortably. Well. And? Now, Rubik at this bottom lane. He's, gonna, he's got the Fade Bolt here. Can just push out this lane as much as possible. Invoker Pelosan. He's got his Boots of Travel online with a Hex BKB. Is this even going to be enough? I'm not entirely sure it will be. Tornado EMP just being used to harass and being as annoying as possible here. Koala. 7.2k gold. Massive, massive Spectre. This is where he thinks Butterfly is going to go in. They've caught up Pelosan. They've got the engagement they need. Invoka. Oh, he's going to Ghost Walk out of this one. It's going to be okay for now. The Spectre still wants to chase. Radiant's Puck has the detection down. needed. There's a Dream Call as well. The oh, Dagon not going to be enough. The Dream Call goes in. Puck with the BKB. That keeps himself alive as well. Prevents him getting stunned up. Looks like Sanking may take a fall. He's being chased down. And Chibix will go down in the fountain. Possibly Rubik as well. When you're being di dived in your fountain... You know this may be the beginning of the end. They lose three in their base. They've still got Raxus standing. There's actually a bit of Rat Dota Miracle doing what he's most well known for. He's got an Alpha Wolf from a Hell in the Dominant, getting himself some extra damage. Spectre are going to TP back. Look to deal with this Rat Dota, but they're not actually getting Raxus out of this. There is going to be a TP out from Miracle. Puck, meanwhile, getting a kill. Kills off the Clockwork. That was at, well, inside the base once again. Only the TA left standing. He is back, but there's nothing TA can really do about this on his own. And it's going to be a 5v1 scenario. At the enemy base. I guess Spectre's still not there just yet. Spectre, pick up some boots of travel. He's got the money for it. His TP will be on cooldown, so we can't actually TP back in immediately. And they... Oh! Puck blows the Aegis. Serpent Wards get dropped here, and it looks attack. like they want to go for these Raxes. I think the Aegis... Yeah, was... Um, I'd say two or three minutes left on it, so a bit surprising to see him just throw it away. Mix Assassin... Oh, those Psyblade damage. Gets him very low. The tower now doing some pot shots as well. Radiant's Blink in. There's a BKB force from Miracle. He's looking to go on the AA. Has a four stuff though. They've got all these four stuff just to kite him around with. Miracle just looking to buy some time now. Looks like he may just straight up go down here. There is going to be his teammates respawning, giving him some back. And the AA Ice Blast comes flying in. Tier with an immediate buyback. They've lost two right off the bat though. The Rubik and Sanking both taking a full Sanking. Actually, the cogs underneath the fountain here. They may have just dived too far. The Deafening Blast Media. Doing a ton of damage here. Brings down the AA. Gets the Spectre low as well. Spectre though. He's going to buy back if he needs it. Unfortunately for him. He's got no horn if he has to use it. Shadow Shaman hexed up a broken TP out. Side keep themselves alive. They lose their Rax here. Tornado going to go looking for the Spectre. He will catch him out. And they actually bring it out. The Deathling Blast is going to land here. They may have a Cold Snap as well soon. TA may finish him off as well. Spectre. Evade. 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 Knock it. He's trapped. Stay in the trees. That are not. Those are not the trees you want to be staying in. He gets brought down. He has a buyback, but I don't even think he's going to need it. And Scythe are probably thinking, Spectre's dead, let's go push. Could have looked to find some way to end this game off of this, but I don't think they're going to be able to. It's just not going to happen, I want to say. Double damage. Well. Miracle. He's, he's got his Butterfly 700 gold. Use the buyback that fight. And I think maybe this is Scythe. They're thinking this is our last hurrah. Even if they don't win this fight, they're at least thinking, let's force a Spectre buyback. They've got to start chipping into his gold at some point in the game, and they're going to go into the high ground here. Spectre waiting as long as possible before he uses his buyback. We'll do so now. TP's in immediately. The Nyx is there with initiation. Pelosi in trouble. He's got a BKB, but he's got no mana whatsoever. He's trying to TP out. 
With the magic wand, it won't do so. Spectre gets the last hit just before the TP procs in with Invoker on the sidelines. Does have buyback in five seconds. Rain Tracks maybe gonna go down here. The Rat Dota, it's starting to kick in a bit. But it's really just it still feels like such a big uphill battle. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think it's gonna be enough. It just feels like too little too late. Nyx Assassin. Diffusal Blade picked up even. Interesting item choice. I guess you diffuse the Necro Book of the Invoker? Is that what this is for? I mean, it's an extra slow as well. I don't think what else you want to use it on. You can purge off Hex. There we go. Diffuse the, the Hex. Your teammate gets Hex, you use the Diffusal Blade to get rid of it. Actually, in that sense, it's a pretty good late game item. Like a, a niche luxury item. And... RIQ ready to go high gun. They've got Haunt, they've got bi actually no Bible on Spectre. What am I talking about? They just used it here. Epicenter going, they want to focus on the Spectre. I don't think there's a damage. Four stuff out number one. Four stuff number two. He's just getting moved around like a ping pong ball, this Spectre. He's still full HP, more or less. They killed the Clockwork. Invoker going to buy back. TA trying to go in and do some damage here, but just forced to run with the BKB. Trying to go on Koala here. There is another stun coming out. Sunstrike will do a lot of damage. Koala will go down. That's two minutes without the Spectre here. And with TA and Invoker still alive, they can almost fight this, but they're going to lose the TA. Invoker going to go down as well. The Dagon coming in from the puck. Dagon. On five at its finest. Sankin going to buy back as well. He's the last man standing. He's not going to get a bar strike off. There's a BKB on the puck. He's now going to look to finish off the Sankin. Dagon up in three, two, one. Not even needed. They get himself a triple kill, and this is GG. Scythe, they fought hard and long. 53 minutes. What a grand finals we've got here, guys. Scythe and RRQ taking it to the limit, guys. We're going to be going to a game three decider. Whoo! Oh boy. What a lot of fun we've had in this grand final, guys. Big thanks to everyone who's uh, tuned in for the ride. We're going to a game three. We had Titan and Execration go the full distance with Titan taking game one, Execration game two before Titan won the third place decided. But this is a grand finals. 3,000 US dollars up for grabs. And right now, these two teams, neither of them wants to give up without a fight. We've seen two really long drawn out games, 42 minutes, 53 minutes here. And well, we don't even know what's gonna, who's going to take this series. We're going to a game three decider, guys. I'm God's. From beyond the summer, we're casting some SEA Dota, courtesy of E-Club, who are the organizers of the ACG SEA Best of the Best Tournament. We've got $3,000 up for grabs. When we come back, we're going to see game number three and who's going to be walking away with the bulk of that, guys. Stay tuned.